Hey, what's up guys? Now today I'm gonna do something so cool and so stupid, the result will be epic and exciting. I've had this special idea in my mind for a couple of months now and today is the day where I put together this retro-like build based on my 12 year old AMD Athlon CPU back from 2006. Once that's done I will try to fire up some older games and even newer ones like Rise of the Tomb Raider, The Witcher 3, Skyrim and so on. We'll see if those will even run and if they do, how well so. Now for the record I already did some pre-testing, installed windows and games and pretty much made sure all the components actually still work. And they do. Let's go over my component choice, shall we? For the CPU, of course, the AMD Athlon 64X2 3800+, a 64-bit dual-core clocked at at least 2 GHz. This is the AIM2 socket version of the processor, and I tried finding as much DDR2 RAM as possible that I had lying around, and I got together 5 GB in total. Definitely not the best scenario, but that should do. This will all be installed onto the fairly unusually sized Azra K10 and 78D motherboard, which is one of those multi-socket boards ranging from AIM2, AIM2 Plus and AIM3. We have NVIDIA's N4720D chipset on here, plus it's the only AIM2 board I have that has 4 DDR2 DIMM slots. As for the graphics card, initially I planned on getting something not too old, but quite powerful, which would have been the ATI Radeon HD 4890, a DX9 GPU, kindly provided by Stefan Miller. But I did run into some issues with this card and this specific build, and DX9 wouldn't have allowed me to run any modern games anyway. So I swapped it out for something more recent, the GTX 750 by Nvidia. This card was provided by Patrick from the YouTube channel Brickmove. This should be more than enough for the system. Storage wise I'll go with this 500GB Western Digital Caviar Blue hard drive and to provide power to all these nice components, this not so modular Corsair TX850 power supply comes into play. Not the best choice I know, but it's the only PSU not in one of my systems right now. Of course old doesn't have to look old, so to bring some RGB action into this build, I'll go with this UFO cooler by Cooler Master, the G100M. Last but not least, all of this will be installed into this stylish modern tempered glass case, namely the Sahara P35 with RGB fans. Oh and of course I've also brought this old 19 inch monitor with me for a more authentic experience. And now it's time to assemble this bad boy and bring this Athlon CPU back to life.
Okay, as you may have noticed, I did run into a clearance issue with the UFO cooler and the rear case fan due to the motherboard's unusual dimensions, but I've simply relocated the fan to the top so we're fine now. The finished build doesn't look too shabby if I may say so. Cable management's not the best I know. Too many cables and laziness do not go well together, still I think it turned out alright. The system seems to be working, CPU is detected, all the memory is detected, hard drive shows up, all fine. The lighting is all configured and it's matching now. I went with green since this is what seems to go well with the Athlon brand. For the operating system I installed Windows 7. And yeah, I strangely feel very happy this system works. After all, I was very satisfied with the CPU back then. It sure did serve me well. And would you look at that. The system's still pretty snappy as you can see, but how well does it handle games? Okay, older games like Tomb Raider Anniversary run extremely well with over 100 FPS and even the demanding Age of Empires 3 runs fairly well despite the CPU constantly being utilized at 100%. The frame rate is good but there is some occasional stuttering going on and this can be seen in pretty much all the more modern games I've tested. Clearly the CPU is bottlenecking, the GPU is capable of delivering more but the CPU simply can't keep up with the stress being put on it. So most of the time the gaming experience is very bad admittedly. But in its own very special way this Athlon 64X2 still kicks ass considering the age of the CPU. I mean over 10 years later coming from a completely different era we have to be happy the games even start and somewhat run. If you're asking me it's quite impressive seeing this CPU being able to output not like 1 or 2 FPS but like 15 or more in modern games. And no, a better graphics card wouldn't help this situation, but I'm more than pleased with these results. So I hope you've enjoyed this quite silly experiment of mine. I really wanted to do something with my old Athlon and I'm proud to say it still kicks ass in its very own way. And with that said, thanks for watching.